Check out this segment of the Gig Geezer all the way to its end as I will share with you my top three gig delivery apps for the month of May and so far for 2023. It is Thursday, June 1st, 2023. We're at the start of the month and the beginning of the dog fucking days here in the Columbia, South Carolina metropolitan area. I'd already kind of noticed that it was getting pretty slow and it was... Um, and things are going to be kind of hard to come by a couple of weeks ago. And um, it's days like this when you, you're you glad that you have um, the equipment to get certain opportunities. Although there's no guarantee that you're going to get those opportunities. Case in point, um, I had, in fact, I didn't even talk to my man Steve about this one though. Um, there was a roadie order that started out at 95 going to Florence. And Florence from Columbia is like an hour. Um, depending on what location you are. From my front step, Florence is like 45 minutes away. But from that point um, where the pickup location was, it would have been more like an hour to an hour and 15 minutes. Well, I didn't get it the first go. But, and um, the order reappeared, and I put in for it. And there, there was no action on it for like 20 minutes, which means that something's not right here. This could be a situation where the merchant, the store, uh, may have decided to pull it. And um, I, I, I did not think that another person would have gotten it. Um, now you're saying, well, how do you how do you know that you would have gotten it, Geezer? Well, I was betting on the fact that I had the right, the correct vehicle. I have some history in the algorithm from that place, and I was somewhat proximate to the location. So um, I had those factors going, going in my favor. Well, it says, sorry, you didn't get it. Well, upon further investigation, it, they pulled it and used one of their drivers in one of their vehicles to do that particular order. So that's, that's what I mean by nothing's guaranteed out there. But... The other thing that folk like myself and Steve and some others whom, I, whom I've been in conversation with, another one is like uh, Mr. Butler um, in the Charleston market, um, you gotta, you're, you're putting up, you're going up against people sometimes in cars. They're showing up in cars, small SUVs, maybe even a, a, a pickup truck that may not have the capacity to carry certain certain loads, and. Um, You've got you got to go up against that. I mean, because they see the dollar amount, they're saying, "Fuck it, I'll take a chance. I'll see what I can do with it." And it's only when they get there when they realize, "Well, I can't really do it." I mean, one of the funniest stories that I've heard is one that Steve has described to me, in that he said someone showed up in a Hyundai and tried to argue down the Walmart person about a 65-inch TV. Said, "Hey, I I can take it out the box, and then and then um you know I'll put the box on top." And I'll put the TV in the back and make sure that nothing happens to it. And the Walmart person is dumb. You can't do that, man. You can't open a box. So you've got. I mean, you can call. You can call it. Uh, 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 you can call it enterprising, but that's thirst. That's thirst personified when you start pulling shit like that. And I and I really believe that's going to be the case this summer. I mean, hey. The economy is the, the economy is where where it is right now, and um, it's that time of year where some people are out of work uh, because of the time of the year, and there are people who are in financial situations where they need to make money, and they're going to do whatever they think they, can, they have to do. I mean, I've told my daughter that hey, I'll lie. I in fact, no, I have told my daughter. That I have lied, I have stolen, I have cheated, and I'm damn near killed for her. And so, that's what people will do. That's just a fact of life right there. Well, enough that. My month of May was actually, if it weren't for March, would have been my best month ever in the gig economy and thus far operating a Sprinter slash cargo van. But it's only my second best month of I finished the month right at about $7,700. Now, I'm not 
crowing $7,700 to say that, hey, I've got, I'm making the most money here on, on, um, on YouTube. No. I'm certain that there are, there are Sprinter slash cargo van drivers who are doing primary local stuff that may be making more than me. And if you are, I would love to hear your comments in the section below. And by the way, if you like the content that's been provided in this segment of the Gig Geezer and any other segment of the Gig Geezer, hit that subscribe button, give my content a thumbs up, and again, I share, um, share my content among others, and I'd welcome your comments in the section below. So, the, the fact that I made 7700 was a little less than what I thought that I was tracking for. I really thought that I was going to hit 8000 uh, last month. But um, the month started getting slow, and opportunities were getting a little scarcer. And so I finished the month of May not topping $300 in any single day. And what I mean by that, um, well, last week, Thursday, I topped 300 I made 312 But my last four working days of the month, I did not top $300. And in order to make that type of money, you've got to have some 300 and 400 300 plus 400 plus dollar days and I didn't hit them so that's on me um, it could be a combination of really the market or the places that I that where I was or it could have been my inability to put myself in a position to get those opportunities um, I'll, I'll always take ownership for for things that don't go my that, that I'll always take ownership for things that uh, don't go the way that I'd drawn it up on the, on the board. So one may wonder uh, about expenses and things like that and miles driven. I drove about 5,800 miles last month. Um, it was uh, sometimes, I, I believe like with, when you're operating a spinner slash cargo van, you're gonna have to drive some miles to make money. Um, the question is how often and how, how often are you gonna have to drive those miles? Now, it's one thing to go over the road and be away for two or three weeks at a time and driving twice as many miles to make the same money or more. And then there's the other argument um, where you're home every night, but you're still gonna have to drive, put in some miles, especially this time of the year. Um, and one of the reasons why that you're, um, I believe that people are gonna be having to put miles in because they're gonna have to drive they're gonna to have to drive miles to make money. They're gonna to to drive miles maybe to go to other places to make the money where um, their immediate market is not um, as fluid as it may have been, say, three months ago. Now, that was the case in 2000, at least in my experience uh, in the gig economy, that was my experience back in 2018 and 2019, more so in 2018, 2019. Um, 2017, I really didn't get caught up into it, but 2018, 2019, um, I have shared in mo on multiple occasions how I would migrate to um, Charlotte or Charleston uh, when I was doing primarily ride share. Now, 2019, I did not migrate as often because I had Amazon Flex for most of the year. And Amazon Flex pretty much carried me. For the 10, 10, 11 months that I did Amazon Flex, I made $33,000. So um, I was averaging $3,000 a month. And, there, there, and those, of you who are, those of you who are my former Amazon Flex colleagues who um, are subscribers on the Get Geezer channel, you know that I was one of the higher, highest, I was one of the highest earners among the drivers in the, in the Columbia market. Now, um, so I mentioned about driving um, more miles. Um, of course, that means in turn gas. Uh, so I said I drove 5,800 miles last month. My expenses were somewhere around 4,800. Now my expenses include a lot of things that most people may not count. And I'll just give you a couple of things for example. The fact that I'm also an insurance agent, among my expenses is office rent. Um, the fact that I had a couple of, I had a couple of uh, uh, renewals uh, one for my business owner policy for my office that is also used for the transport business and um, there was also renewal for under marketing or advertising for an internet site that I that I've that I've continued to keep or the server that is behind it that was an annual renewal that I had to um, take care of as well then there is a uh, interest now um, the IRS does not allow you to claim your monthly 
payments, but the IRS does allow you to claim interest. And so I claim 100% interest paid on this van, but I claim about 80% of the interest that is paid on my F-150 because I do use the F-150 for mostly business purposes. So um, that, and the other big expense, other than gas, well, the two biggest expenses, the two biggest I, um, um, ticket items are insurance for the van, the commercial insurance, which is $1,520, and then um, gas, which was about 1200 and somewhere's about $1,240 last month. So uh, that means over half, more than half of my outlays is in two items, gas and Sprinter slash cargo van insurance. So um, obviously I still made a profit, maybe not as much of a profit as say in March or maybe for that matter, April. Um, the other reality is that with me transitioning away from um, the gig food delivery work, you're gonna put miles on your vehicle when you're doing last mile. That just goes with the territory. Now, I'm actually in the midst of having stacked three order opportunities. Two of them, I've, I've dropped off one of them, I picked up a second one, and now I'm about to pick up the third one. Now, the one that I dropped off was a Grubhub for $12.19. Um, it was a donut shop going to the, to the um, hospital campus um, near downtown. Um, there's actually two, there's three hospital campuses downtown Columbia, South Carolina. Um, but this one um, is the, this is, this is one that's not close to where my office is. This one is, um, this one is what, Richland Memorial. And so anyway, um, that was $12.19. Then there was, um, then there is this point pickup in which I picked up a set of tires and um, I've got those already in back. And then I've got um, a roadie order that I, that I um, have, that I will be picking up. It appears to be six batteries, six interstate batteries or six Exide batteries. And the tires and the batteries are going in, in the same, in the vicinity of each other. One place is about 20, they're about 20, 25 minutes apart. So that's, so that makes sense. You know, if, the fact that I was able to stack those two in addition to the, to the, um, to the um, rub up. So all together, that's an $80 play. And for the day, um, I, I'll be at about a buck seventy-five, giving me the option to go back out this evening and make a few dollars, and um, and quite honestly, um, probably be settling for anything over two hundred dollars today, especially on a, th on a Thursday. Um, I've had better Thursdays, but I, I'm being realistic today. Hopefully, I'll do better tomorrow. So when I get back with you. I'm gonna share some other things about uh, my month of May, and um, also um, probably uh, probably be wrapping up this particular segment of the gig teaser as well. Well, the thing about coming out this way is you, everyone is guaranteed to have no service with their phones. And the last time I was out this way, which is the Lake Watery area, which is beyond Camden, South Carolina and beyond Ridgeway, South Carolina, uh, Camden being the, the more um, recognizable populous area, you're out here in parts unknown. You, you're over where there's a, there's a, a, a body of water and a lot of boats and no service. Now, I uh, just dropped off six marine batteries. First time I've ever dealt with marine batteries. Batteries are all, all batteries are heavy. Um, and so that's really the end of uh, this first half grind. Um, all in about, all in about what, four hours? Four hours total. I'm at a buck seventy-seven, and um, really and truly, I'm just looking to come back out for a couple hours and make as much as I can. 
and call it a day. Um, and the expectation is, of course, to be over $200. What would be extremely nice is if I'm over 250 because that's what I hit yesterday. Actually, I was over 250 um, but I, I've yet to get the final numbers yet on that. But I'm supposed I'm I'm in the I, yesterday I, I made in the neighborhood of two hundred and eighty dollars when it's all said and done. On Tuesday I made two hundred and twenty two dollars, and I didn't go out on Monday, uh, which was Memorial Day. But but I want to share with some numbers for the month of May in terms of uh, at least starting with the month of May and then just go back over for the uh, at this juncture for the um, at this juncture of the year. My top three earning apps in May were Roadie. I made $1,775 on Roadie. That was number one. Number two was Freight. I made $763 on that app. And then number three was Delivered. And we're talking having made right at about $7,700. These are still, the, the total number is still unofficial, but it's it's in that range. It's, it's, it's pretty safe to say in that range. In the month of April, Roadie was number one again, $907. Delivered was number two at $506. Uber Eats was number one, uh, number three at $499. Actually, just a tick under five bills. And I made uh, in April $6,592. In March, Delivered was number one at $1,219. Roadie was second at $988. And Uber Eats was third at $817, and I made that month $9,079. Now, what I did not include was a van expediting opportunity in which I made over $1,400, something that I've shared many, many times or made many references, the Charlotte to um, San Antonio, and I made over $1,400 on that one. And then I turned around a couple of days later, and, well, that was actually in a month of April, so that one did not count. Um, and February, uh, in February, Instacart was number one at $1,191, DoorDash was second at $1,189, and Delivered was third at $1,100, and I made that, that month $7,056. To start off the year in January, uh, Instacart was number one at $1,375, DoorDash was second at $890, and Uber Eats was third at $816, and I made um, in January $7,110, and uh, as of year to date, as of yesterday, unofficially, I'm at $37,514, and yeah, so that's where I'm at. For the month, for, so far, year to date, I'm at over, I'm at 30. I'm over $37,500, and I mentioned in another in a recent segment of Gig Geezer where I felt that I should have been over 40,000, ideally about 42.5, and so it is what it is. But if you like the content that's been provided in this segment of Gig Geezer or in any other segment of Gig Geezer, hit that subscribe button, give my content a thumbs up, share my content among others, and I definitely welcome your comments in the section below. I'm in Wood Lane, and as always, may your grind and may your hustle continue.